Hey everybody, Wildman Wes here. And Hefe. And welcome to a special edition of What's Your Poison. Much like everything in the world, you can't always agree on everything. And with friends, one thing you can't always agree on is what's the better beer. So you know what that means, right? Today's episode of What's Your Poison is going to be a versus battle. Beer versus beer. Versus beer. beer. Let's, Let's get it on. Round one in our beer verses, we have the Chocolate War Zone from Metal Monkey. And we have the Chocolate and Raspberry Pot de Creme from Hubbard's Cave. I've never been the expert on giving everything in detail on the beers. You are the expert, so you get to tell everybody what's in each one, but we get to decide which one we are. Basically, choosing. we decided to pit up against two chocolate raspberry beers that were also stouts, or in the same wheelhouse, so these are both chocolate raspberry stouts. The other thing they have in common is that they are both from Illinois. This one is right out of Romeoville, which is very close to us, and this one is from Niles, Illinois, which I'm not very familiar with the location of, but it's in Illinois. So we're going to start with the one that I chose. We're going with the Chocolate War Zone from Metal Monkey. I've had this before. I love it. It's so delicious. It's sweet. It's tart. It gets to the point. Absolutely. Uh, I've actually had this on draft myself. Um, brought it into my bar. And very, very good um, Good turnout. Very dark. Oh, yeah. This is as stouty as stouts go, for sure. Mm -hmm. How's that head, bud? Well, oh, that head's good head. Oh. Head's very important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, definitely. Stout. I'm getting a lot of tart from raspberries on the top. There we go. Getting some bitter notes in there. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a lot of the raspberry and the oats kind of giving it a bitterness there. Mm -hmm. That's not too bad. A little smoky at the end. Yeah, I, I'm I getting some smoke at the end. What I'm loving about the tart on this one is that normally when you have something sour, you know, especially like a sour, especially like this, you're expecting it to be really sour, or you know, you get that really sour aftertaste. This one, it's almost like biting into a like a chocolate covered raspberry. Or any type of chocolate covered fruit. Yeah, it's it, again like that kind of bitter chocolate, more of a bitter chocolate than mm -hmm. a sweet chocolate. Yeah, that's not bad. I mean, because normally I'm not, I'm not a big fan of a lot of like beers with fruit in it. I mean, if you're doing like a cider beer, you know, sure. I'll do that. But I mean, like sometimes a shandy's for me smells too much like pine saw for me, so that, it just hurts my nose. I hear you. This, I mean, you don't get a lot of the, you, know, you don't get too much of the raspberry. You know, you should, definitely you know, get it. Up. The tartness really lingers on your tongue. I know that that's where mine's lingering right now. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, it's been. I mean, it's been a little bit since I've had it, but um, same here. It's bitter. It's, still a, it's like a welcome back. You are getting a bitter, chocolatey sweetness. Um, and th that smoke at the very end is kind of taking me out of the whole beer, though. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, I mean, not not in a bad way maybe that's intentional yeah. I mean sometimes this is one of those beers that you, it's like if you don't if you want to go out and have a good time but you're not gonna drink a whole lot right this would be my recommendation because you know sometimes hey we all have people that have to be designated drivers once in a while but sometimes you want to have a drink during those couple hours to make sure that you're enjoying yourself as well this is definitely one of those that you can have at the beginning of the night and then not really have to drink much afterwards I mean and then everybody's safe yeah, we're going to have to look up the uh, ABV on this one because it's not listed on the can. Hmm. But uh, I think it's a little higher, maybe 6, 7. That'd be my guess, about 7. I'd say, I'd say about 7.4, like, average. Sure. Uh, and we'll have, to, we'll have to look that up and get back to you. Mm -hmm. Well, time to grade this now. Huh? Oh, man. What are you giving it? Um, I'm giving it 2.5 pals. <laughs> two and a half pals. 2.5 pals. All right. Well, I'm going to have to disagree with you on that, brother. I'm saying this is going to be about at least a three and a quarter pal. Oh. Pal. Three and a quarter pal. Pow. pow. All right. Well, while we're finishing up this, it's time to go on to half face choice. I'm just, what I got to say? Yeah. I got taste. Oof. Yeah. Bad taste. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. All right. So for my throw into the ring, I'm bringing Hubbard's Cave 
chocolate and raspberry pop the crème. Um, bougie! It sounds okay. bougie! So, sounds pretentious, right? Um, Harbor Cape makes a lot of really good stouts. They make a lot of really good uh, IPAs too. Um, Hubbard Cave, Hubbard's Cave in general, I've had a good, good amount of their product, but they are always coming out with new stuff. Very much like a Hot Butcher or any of the other big guys that are really a contender when it comes to amazing flavor. Alright. So, when I saw this, I automatically thought, there's definitely got to be a way that this beer is better than Chocolate War Zone of all of them. Oh. But I have never had it, so that's why we're going to give it a shot. This guy. This guy. Yeah. I just believe... never had the Never had the beer, and he's you know, speaking like highly of it. It's like Luke Skywalker using the Force for the first time. Absolutely. Here's, here's why I say that. If you believe in a brewery and believe in the product that they produce, there's no reason to doubt them. I'll, I'll try to believe you on this one. Alright. It literally looks the same as the last beer we just had. Mm -hmm. I can smell the chocolate notes from here already, so... Yep. Ooh. This one is... It smells like a pastry. Mm -hmm. Well, it, like a pastry. It, it, it might be the... The the, 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 the creme in there, yeah. Wow! Oof! That's so good. That that, is, that's like a vortex right there. This is, it is very different from the other one. Uh, the other one was, like I said, a bitter chocolate. This is sweet and tart. Mm -hmm. um, syrupy, almost. Yeah. This one was, uh, the other one was much lighter, actually. Yeah, because uh, like, when, when, you when you were pouring it out, I could think it was like, Ooh. Jesus, you're thick. Yeah. Thick. 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 Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I absolutely agree. This this is definitely thick, um, thicker than the last one. I've had thicker stouts, but still super sweet. Mm -hmm. And this one, I mean, like um, the chocolate notes aren't necessarily. I mean, dark in stout, but not necessarily in flavor. There is, I mean, with the with, with the the pot de creme as you do the ho ho ho. I think it gives it more of a sweet, like a milk chocolate flavor almost. Super sweet. Though. So, and I, and I think that's what separates this one from the Chocolate War Zone in a way. And the only thing is about the raspberry, it's it's not as tart. I mean, it's or maybe it's the, maybe, it's, maybe it's. I think it's tartar. I think that the sweetness of the chocolate know. really accentuates the raspberry. Maybe the Chocolate War Zone was kind of masking the raspberry, possibly, because of the bitterness of the chocolate. I definitely think the bitterness of the chocolate of the last one definitely uh, made it so different from this one. This is not yeah. bitter, really, at all. I mean, no. I get a little bit of a bitter aftertaste, uh, just kind of the uh, after after breath mm -hmm. of it. Um, it's a little bitter on the tongue. Mm -hmm. uh, but in general, super sweet. This is very, very. I, I think of this like we've talked about dessert beers before. This one's more of a dessert beer than the other one. I agree. The I chocolate, feel like, chocolate I feel war zone's more like if you're gonna have a pint at the bar. Yes. Just hanging out. This one, like oh, even, yeah. even on a spring or summer day, even out on a patio right. bar. However, this is more like you know during the winter time when you're you know with family and you want to have something sweet and desserty yet boozy at the same time. Boozy bougie right here. Boozy bougie. Uh, we just drank a beer that's 12% alcohol. Oofa! <laughs> um, that's, this doesn't taste like 12% alcohol. Who's gonna alcohol? get knocked out first, the beer Shut or us? Up. Seriously, good God. Oh. Right. Wow. You, 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 you okay. <clears throat> there we go. Hey. That was my redemption. So anyways, anyway, grading wise, on this Holy one, hell. I'll be honest, I will give this one Three and three quarter pound. What? Three and was, three quarters. Nah. Because it, it it was it 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 does do a little bit on some Dude, on, on flavor alone. I'm a solid four. I'm All a right. solid four. Well, it looks like I lose the first round of beers on this one, but we go from something sweet to something sour. Let's see if I can prevail in round two. Our next bout, we have two red sour ales. 
Now, the one I'm bringing to the table is from Church Street, local here in Illinois, and Itasca specifically. And this is the first sour that they have ever produced. They came out with this one and then a cherry raspberry version. The red is closer to the Flanders red style sour ale that were coming from my opponent's side of the table. So I'm really interested to try this. I haven't actually had this one. I had the, ch the cherry raspberry. Very, very good. Very much like a boozy juice. And uh, let's see if this one is truer to the style. I'm very excited about it. But I, I definitely have this one in my corner for sure. All right. And for the one that I've chosen from Belgium, we have the Cuvée de Jacobin Roche. I'm going to be the bougie one this time, the pretentious one. This one is a sour that's basically it's fermented with things like stone fruit and apples and cherries. I've never had this one before, but because I've had Damien Marin! Sorry, we'll save that one for another time. <laughs> but I decided I'm gonna use the power of the monks now against be... Father Damien. And to be fair, this to is. Be fair. To be fair. Uh, this is a perfect combatant for this new style of beer here. Uh, this is one of the very true to style red ales that are sours coming from Belgium, where they originated, and uh, definitely interested to see how they compare. Definitely. I have already had this one, so I know how good that is. I want to see how this compares. Fair enough. Well, put on your gloves. Time for some fighting. So we're going to start off here with the Church Street Father Damien Red Sour Ale. Again, this is supposed to be closer to the classic Red Flemish Sour Ales. Uh, Flemish beers are traditionally made in Flanders. Um, this is already looking like... I have a question though. Amberish. It's made in Flanders and it's Flemish. Wouldn't it be considered Flandish? Flandish. <laughs> I'm sorry folks, I had to make the bad joke, but I don't give a shit. We're fighting. <laughs> Okie dokie. <laughs> shit talk is always good in fights. Alright, so uh, yeah, Church Street has come out with a lot of really cool beers in the, the last couple years. Uh, they've rebranded themselves and they've given themselves a new image. I really enjoy everything that they've done recently. I love Church Street's artwork. Absolutely. I always and, and do. That's a part of their rebranding. Some, some of their beers for me, I mean, hit or miss sometimes, but no matter what, whether it's a hit or a miss, the artwork, Some of their core always. Can, it makes me want to buy it. Some of their core can be pretty, not bad. Uh, definitely not saying that they're bad beers. I'm just saying like they're definitely uh, true to the style for the most part. Uh, they haven't until recently started doing some more popular things. Uh, the first thing they did was Little Lucy, which was a uh, hazy IPA that you've tried. Yeah. Uh, Juicifer, which is the father of that beer, and then uh, Juice first good. Yes, and then I'm definitely excited to try the Father Damien regular version here. And it already is more of an amber color, still an amber brown. Uh, not technically a red red, but it is a red sour ale, so. Can I already get the hints? Right on the nose, you get it, it definitely smells tart and sweet. So here we go. Yeah, that is, that is tart. It's sour. It is sour. Ooh. Uh, that is extremely, uh, that is right up the alley of a, a typical Flanders red. That's, that's really good. It's not trying to throw in a whole bunch of fruity notes specifically, but the sour notes in there in the beer. Um, this is really not bad. It's it's not bad. Um, for a sour, it might not be the best I've had. Sure. But, I mean, it's... True to the style, though. To the style, yes. But for, you know, some of the notes and flavors, it's just... For me, it just kind of tastes like a... No offense. No, screw it. Full offense. It's like dropping a warhead in a beard. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, I'm not getting a warhead at all. No, no, I'm saying the <laughs> sourness of a warhead. It does have the sourness of a warhead. Uh, it really does make you pucker. Um, this beer in particular, though. <laughs> no joke. Ayo. Uh, this, this really does have uh, some soft sweet notes to it as well. Um, can't really explain it, but this is some kind of cardamom um, okay. or, or tannins. Very you know. natural sour flavors. I don't think it tastes sugary sweet. No. So that's why I say no to warheads. Because it's not sugary sweet. Well, no, no, no. I'm not saying like the, the sugary sweetness. I'm talking about that sour coating they put. That's what that's what I'm getting. I'm getting that 
that rem reminiscence, you know, warhead sour flavor. I hear what you're saying. It, it, that tartness. Mm -hmm. The level of tart is very high on this. It's one. like they I'm took. It, it, it looks like it, it tastes like they took the black cherry warhead and put it in, yes. in, a, in a sour ale. Yes. Okay. And, and that's what I'm getting. I, I can agree with that. Yeah, it definitely tastes like uh, the, the black cherry warhead. I, I would say that's the closest you could come to that without having to drink the beer is black cherry warhead. Fair enough. Imagine that as a beverage, folks. Oof. There you go. We are only looking at uh, just a little ABV here. Not much craziness going on. Oh, 6.8. That's a little higher than I thought, actually. Well, <laughs> but for a sour, it's... That's high. A tie for a sour. Let's be serious. Uh, a normal sour is you're looking at five or below, and if you're looking at above five, it's definitely a. Well, you know, well because if I remember correctly, I mean, because there have been like from high noon some of the sours like the with the fuzzy smacks, that peach navel or noon the whistle, yeah, yeah noon whistle mm -hmm. was yeah noon whistle. I mean, it's got that sourness, but I mean, I would say that the ABV, if I remember correctly, it's like about a five point nine something agree. like that, or almost six now, point, six percent. Now anything from Noon Whistle with their uh, fuzzy series is basically all their sour series. Is a lot of the times you're going to get uh, a wheat back uh, backbone to it. Okay. So it's like a sour wheat beer if if you look at it that way. Um, it's always a little more hazy. It's definitely got a, a medium body to it. Uh, this one is light in body, super tart. Um, yeah, and the more I'm drinking it, the more tart it becomes. So I think at this point it comes down to, what do you grade this, sir? Mm. I'm going to have to go with about three pals. Three well, pals. Three pals. Okay. I'm sorry, but four pals for me. Four pals. Four pals against three. All right. Well, well I'm shucking back the rest of this sour shit. Time to uh -oh. go from the States to Europe to Belgium. Oh, gee. Right? Am I wrong? You ain't wrong. You ain't wrong, but I might not be right. But, you know, <laughs> that's how life is. We'll be right back. So my take on this round from Belgium is the Cave de Jacobin Rouge. Right? Rouge. 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 Uh, it's, it's Rouge. Red. Yeah. Um, it's Cave de Jacobin is red. <laughs> like I said before, I've never had this one before yet, so I'd like to see if it's going to take on... Uh, the I think it will. If anything, this is, like I said, one of the standalone beers that is available in the States pretty much everywhere. It should be everywhere. Uh, Belgium has a really great Belgian beer distribution in the country. So, they know what a lot of people are looking for Belgian style beers. And there's no reason that this beer should not be contending uh, any type of red sour ale in the country. This is a standard, I will say that. You're the one who does the best pour, I'm sorry. Pour my beer. Well, I didn't do so good on that first one. <laughs> it's all right. Definitely can see the amber. A little bit darker amber, isn't it, folks? So this is closer I mean, to you, that red. Yeah, you definitely get red in the light, brown. for sure. Dark brown. Uh, Darker than the amber that was in Jurassic Whoa. Park. You get a lot of light sweetness right on the top. This actually looks mm. very similar to the last beer we just had. This and is a fantastic combination. I mean, the, s the smell, I wouldn't say vinegary. I mean, it ha it's, it's very... Honestly... It hits your nostrils, though. Here's the thing. Vinegary is, it is a okay. it is a flavor profile of sours. So okay. don't be surprised if the more well, not traditional you get. No, I'm not kidding. Oh. Vinegary is literally the term that they use. It's like a cherry malt vinegar. Okay, yeah. And that's okay. I'm not a huge fan of the smell of malt vinegar, but I smell the vinegar, it's like a cherry vinegar. So, let's mm. go. Ooh, yeah. Holy crap. <laughs> Now that's not a warhead sour right there, but no, okay. I it's been a while since I've had this beer. Mmm. That it that this is a standard for a reason. Let's this is a standard for a reason. This is a fantastic uh, oh, red sour. I I love. But, I'm loving this. I will say this. Church Street did a very very close job to replicating this style. It, they, like, they did. When it comes to this style, this is a standard. That was a really good attempt. And not saying that the attempt failed, because it didn't fail. It's just, how do you compete with originality? You know what I mean? 
I mean, the only times that you can compete is if you do close to home with, you know, the style, the standard, sure, sure. or if you do a hybrid. Yeah. And, and now there are some hybrids that have probably done phenomenal. Most of them probably hit or miss, and, or mostly miss, but... Wow. I mean, Father Damien comes close. Father Damien is definitely more tart than it is uh, sweet, smooth, and enjoyable. Mm. This is sweet, smooth, and enjoyable. It is tart, but that tartness goes away pretty quick. Mm -hmm. The other one, the tart lingered. I'm thinking a lot of the, like, I'm getting the sour right off the bat, but I'm also getting that cider, that apple on there the is finish, like a, there, there's where it's, it's, it's almost like you bite into a Granny Smith. The other one was more tart than sweet. This is more sweet than tart. That's what it is. So is that really the balance that they're supposed to be finding? Because I, I absolutely agree on that one. I, I believe that's what they're looking for because, you know, anybody can have a sour or any type of, you know, like any, I'm going off on a different limb here. If you think about things like IPAs, I mean, sometimes, sometimes people like IPAs. Sometimes people like double IPAs. Yeah. It, it's all. It sometimes all people like, like the hoppier, the better. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it could. It's definitely all personal perception. Yeah, and I, and I think for this one, for me personally, on on the sour notes, I mean, I I enjoy this one completely. This I, is really good. I could go through quite a number of these on a summer day, especially. Sure. All right. And then again, I could do it any day. Really? Because you can drink beer any day you want. So what's your grading, sir? Hmm. I'm giving this one a solid four out of five pounds. Four out of five pounds. Honestly, I have to cave in. Four and a half out of five. Four and a half out of five. This beer wins this battle. Boom. All right. Really good. It's really good. Well, we started with sweet. Then we went to tart. Well, the first one was a sweet tart, in a way. Sweet tart, but we're going from sweet tart to s s tart. Now we're going to sweet. Sweet. Oh, it's going to be so sweet. <sighs> Not just that, but we kind of have a two-on-one match. Main event, folks. Get Main ready. event. Get this ready. is what you paid for. Get ready. So for our main event, we have a two-on-one match. We have the Wet Snout, Peanut Butter Stout, from Sleepy Dog Brewing. And there is a little misconception on this one that Hefe introduced me to, so you let me know about this. So what happened with Sleepy Dog is that they were out in Arizona, and two brothers from Warrensville, Illinois, actually reached out to them because they were looking for help to keep brewing their beer. They wanted uh, they wanted to be able to keep producing their beer. So Two Brothers actually bought them and produced their own beer, Two Brothers, in Arizona, and then decided, hey, we can further the distribution on this since we own it now, out into Illinois. So they make it in Warrenville, uh, especially the stuff you see here is from, from Warrenville itself, not from Arizona, but the original brewery is in Arizona. I'm glad you let me know on that one. Just, be just before I made any mistakes while doing this review. And its tag team partner, we have the Chocolate Lab Porter from Wisconsin Brewing Company in Verona, Wisconsin. Both of them I've had, very similar, but against the person we're going up against. In order to defeat the champion of peanut butter porters, they had to defeat Sweet Baby Jesus from <gasps> Duclaw no. in Maryland. Now, Sweet Baby Jesus doesn't need a tag team partner. The Sweet Baby Jesus Chocolate Peanut Butter Porter can stand on its own two legs, whereas you need the power of both Chocolate Lab and Sleepy Dog of Peanut Butter in order to defeat it. Let's see if that even happens, folks. Ding, ding. All right, so this is Sweet Baby Jesus from Duclaw. Duclaw comes out with a lot of really good beers out from the East Coast, and I'm really excited to try this one out. I think a lot of people have had this one already, but I have not. Oh, oh, I haven't had it either, so I mean, hey, you say it's the king of the mountain. I want to see if it's going to get dethroned or not. <laughs> king, oh, of the castle, wanna... king of the castle. No, I want to see it get dethroned like Mufasa with Scar. Ooh. Sorry, kids. Spoiler alert, that's what happens at the Spoiler, movie. Spoiler, it's sad. It's a horrible part of the movie. Ooh, that was a good part. Oh, that was a good part. Perfect. 
Okay, so. Ooh, yeah. What are we getting right off the top there? You're getting that hot, uh, that mixture of peanut butter yeah. and chocolate. Reese's man. peanut butter cups, mm -hmm. so Reese's pieces. You just open up that box and bam, there's that smell. Woo -hoo -hoo. I like it. Here we go. I'm actually surprised. I mean, like, it's definitely got uh, the smokiness and peatiness from the malt. Uh, I get a little chocolate out of that, a little bitter chocolate. Yeah, I mean. I get a little sweetness. I'm getting more from the peanut butter. I'm getting more peanut butter than chocolate. But it's light peanut butter. It's not. Yeah. Like, it's not like a creamy peanut. Butter. Honestly, it's more like the the chunky peanut butter. Like you mm -hmm. taste those peanuts, mm -hmm. not the crunch, but like you taste the fresh peanuts. You get the jiffy crunchy. Jiffy crunchy. Jiffy crunchy. I mean, it's like I. It feels like the the chocolate in this is it's like an afterthought. Honestly, yeah, and I kind of agree I'm, with that. I'm, I mean, I'm, like, I'm a little... The, the chocolate blends in so much with the smoky malt and yeah, the peatiness. It's, it's, almost, it's not lackluster, it's just kind of that... It's like fruit striped gum. You get that chocolate for one second, and then you're one like... One second, yeah, I'm only like, getting oh. it for a second, yeah. Uh, nice. I mean, you get the scent like it's like a, like you said, like a, like a Reese's yeah, peanut butter cup. Yeah, you smell it. You smell but, the chocolate peanut butter right but off when, the top. But, but when you taste it, it's like, it's a little disappointment. I don't know. A it's little. It's not as sweet as I thought no, it would be. No, it's like, serious. that's what I was but hoping it's also, for. But it's also not as thick. It's a very light body. Okay, I get that. It's just... But of course, it's a porter. It's a porter. We're not talking about a stout here. No, I mean... It, when we started this episode with a stout, that gave kind of a different precedence. This, True. I expect it to be thicker, but it is a porter, so it definitely is going to have a light to medium body. The peanuts come out, not peanut butter, and the chocolate comes out, but in the malt. Mm -hmm. No, I, I get that, because it's just like... I guess I guess I could say it's the most uh, natural tasting one. Okay. I could Doesn't say... taste artificially no. flavored. No, no, I mean, I mean, it's drinkable. I will say that. Yeah, it's, it's easy. It's very drinkable. It's just, when it comes to... You know, when they say everything looks good on paper, right? I hate to say it, but I'm gonna say it. It it was only good on paper. <sighs> well, it's I'll drink it. It's just I mean, if they have that and not, right. I'm I'm the, the, I sigh because I'm not in total disagreement with you, my friend. Uh, we may be fighting, fighting. We still gotta grade this. Uh, how many pounds you giving it, good sir? I'll give it three, three and a quarter max. <laughs> Three and a quarter? Okay. Three and a quarter max. Um, I'm going to have to disagree and go two and three quarter. Ah, two and three quarter because it's just because of the name of itself. It says chocolate, peanut, butter. And I'm just like, I'm tasting a little. The flavors are there. They're just not evenly balanced. I mean, they are, but they're not. Here's the thing. For me, they are balanced, but it's not chocolate peanut butter it's no. chocolate tea with a peanut flavor okay that's no, what i'm no, getting and i'm getting that too it's just you get the smell of like the reese's peanut butter yes, cup yeah at the beginning right but, there. and that's what you're expecting to and taste and then when you and you're just like it's like a turd in a punch bowl for me but, oh it's uh, a horrible horrible but i gave it a decent thing. pow he gave it three and a, three and three quarters. It's still a passing grade, bitch. So we're gonna move on to our opponent, who needs a tag team for this baby, sweet baby Jesus. It might. Work. It might. You just have to find out. So for my pick on this round, much like the letter Kenny, we got some fucking puppers here. Puppers. We've got from Sleepy Dog Brewing. We've got the what's now peanut butter stout, and from Wisconsin Brewing Company, we have the. Chocolate Porter Lab. So, yes, what was it? The, the first one we had, was it stout or was it a porter? What exactly was it? It was a chocolate peanut butter porter. Okay, well, guess what? We got a porter and a stout. We're going to get a little combination, and we're going to see if we can take down Sea Baby Jesus. I'm going to be honest. This sounds like a lot of fun. We just introduced some of our first mixed beers last episode, so to see this happen here, I really like that as our main event. Yep. Oh, oh, it's right in front of me. I'll let you pop the top. I'll click the tab. Gonna flick it. Remember, this is about drinking. It's not a family show. Apparently, he was using the bottle opener the wrong way. It happens. 
No, because I thought that you should use this end, but it's the cobra face end that you should use. <laughs> Here we go! Go Planet! By your powers combined, I am Captain Planet! Captain Planet, he's a hero! Alright, so we have our hybrid of chocolate and peanut butter. I'm really excited about this, because see how this goes. A lot of head in this. Goes. Oh, wow. Oh, holy crap. The sweetness is definitely there on the nose. Yeah. I mean, that is I've had the chocolate lab porter before. Wow. And I know how sweet it is. And I've had, you know, the wet snap for a while back. And you do get that, you know, that peanut butter. Yeah. No, this really? this really is uh, dark, very smell. and it's dark. Too. Dark. It, this is black. Yeah. All right. I'm I'm down. Let's, let's do this, it. Yeah. Let's try it. It's sweet. It's light. And you get that hint of peanut butter. You get the peanut butter. You get the. This chocolate. tastes like a Reese's right here. This this does. Our. Frick, man. This I can't does. believe this. This is unbelievable. This mix is fantastic. Mm. Chocolate peanut butter. This. You got your peanut butter in my chocolate. You got your chocolate in my peanut butter. <laughs> it's exactly what that is. Amen. That commercial from all those years ago. That is this flavor. Ooh. Holy crap. Mm. Sorry, sweet baby Jesus. I think the angels just sung on this one. Mm. Here, I pour that. You pour that. There we go. Holy cow! Oh my gosh. Wow, the sweetness really comes Woo. out of this. Okay, so let's see. What are we looking at ABV wise? I don't see it. I want to say it's like a six. Oh, you're point two. Five point two. Well, five point two. I'm, I'm an overachiever. Right now you, you were right there. That's a six point uh, two. And a five point nine. So. Look at an average of five to six. That's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, yeah. This is really good. <laughs> you know, and, and who would have thunk it would have started when we did the, you know, chocolate banana last Oh, time. I know, right? Oh. This is a fantastic combo. The sweetness is there, the drinkability is there. Oh, you can easily mix these two, the chocolate peanut butter. There's, I, I'm getting little to no smokiness in general, from the malt. Uh, the chocolate and peanut butter are what stand out. Mm -hmm. That that really does work for it. This is a tag team. Holy yeah, crap. I, I, I'm, I'm loving this. Because this is really good. Now, obviously, you're only going to find this in Wisconsin, I think, right? Uh, I don't know if Wisconsin... No, no, no. Wisconsin Brewing does put some beer out here. They, they do. Yeah. Just this one they have not yet. I I, I've, I've gone to, you know... No, I have no, no, no product placement here. I have not seen this at Binnie's yet. In the Chicago market, I have not seen this specifically. No. I have seen this, obviously, because it's brewed in Warrenville now. Uh, but uh, in general, this combo right here, the Puppers. Honestly, I'm just going to dub it the Puppers. So if you ever see these two in the same place and you order them and mix them, it's called the Puppers. So just that makes strength. Get yourself a fucking Puppers. Get yourself a Puppers. Yep, yep. That's the drink. So now it's, time to, now it's time to rate this, man. Let's rate it. As a mixed beer, I have to say... Four and a half pals, dude. Four Seriously, and a half? I'm up there. I'm like, four and a half pals. Unanimous on that four and a half pals. Four and a half pals. I mean, oh. it's, it's really close to perfect. I mean, like it really does mm -hmm. have... Oh, my God. This I mean, if, I mean if, you're awesome. make, if you're making a hybrid, as we were talking about from the one you picked, it's, you know, everything looks good on paper. But yep. this one, I mean, you know what you're getting with this one, you know what you're getting with this one. But when you mix them together, it's just like, you get oh, a yeah. bibbity bobbity boo right in your mouth. Bibbity bobbity boo. Boo. All right. Oof. This is really good. So it looks like the tag team takes out Sweet Baby Jesus. <laughs> Well, folks, after three different rounds of numerous beers, we've had a great time seeing who wins and who loses. 
We hope you like this. Make sure you leave a thumbs up. Leave a thumbs down if, you know, maybe your beer didn't get chosen for the rounds and whatnot. Make sure you share on social media. And as always, push that red button. Don't forget to ring that bell for instant notifications. Also, if there's any beers you want to see on a review on What's Your Poison, there's a comment section below. Leave a request in there. And if there's any hybrids that we've talked about, leave them in there too. Absolutely. I'm totally down for the next mixed beer. Oh, 100%. yeah. And not just that, but we are taking requests for two different beers you want to see go on Beer Versus. Until then, I'm Wildman West. And I'm Hefe. And we will see you next time on What's Your Poison or Beer Versus.